Calvin, thanks for joining us again. And for those who don't know and maybe haven't yet watched the uh, first episode we did, would you re introduce yourself again to the audience and just give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of your own background in crypto so we know, you know, your, your base of knowledge for discussing these issues? I was introduced to Bitcoin back in uh, 2012. So by now it's been 11 years since I've been in the industry and I trade professionally. So I, I, I make a living from um, buying and selling cryptocurrency and, and that's what I do for a, a living full time right now. Um, I've done it for about seven years full time. And uh, I really just, I just love the news. I love the industry. I'm fascinated by all the new technology coming out. And I have a decent perspective just being in the in the area for this long and being engaged. Uh, so I can kind of explain how things work and, and what's going on you know, pretty, pretty generally. So uh, that's kind of what makes me helpful, at least when we're talking about cryptocurrency. There was uh, some big news in the cryptocurrency world. Why don't you, what is it and why does it matter? Yeah, so it's been very, very frustrating for the people that have been in the industry because originally it was sort of, you know, crypto was a grassroots sort of thing. It was the people came up with this uh, technology. Uh, it caught on like wildfire. People were using it and trading it. And uh, we had kind of built our own little ecosystem and our own little economy um, with crypto. And then it got big enough that governments started noticing it. And since the governments noticed that this this whole thing was happening, um, they're trying to figure out what do we do with this? How do we how do we regulate it? How do we make it safe for the general population or whatever? And uh, there there are good parts of that and there are bad parts of that. Well, lately the SEC, um, rather than really giving very clear guidance. Uh, they've kind of been a uh, kind of a, a, a schoolyard bully. What they've done is they've they've kind of played the card of we're not going to tell you how to navigate the the U.S. legal system, and we're not going to give you uh, rules or or guidance. We're just going to sue everybody, and and we're going to make the the judges decide what's going on. And the SEC has kind of taken the stance that every single cryptocurrency is a security and it should be regulated as such. And um, the problem with that is that none of the exchanges that are currently trading these cryptocurrencies are set up to trade securities. And in many, in some ways, cryptos can behave like securities, but in many other ways, uh, they're not security, securities at all. And so um, people are, there was just kind of this dark cloud of confusion across the United States. You know, is it okay to do in the United States? And with everyone being sued, a lot of projects were scared to develop technology and expand um, some of the incredible, you know, things that are that are being, you know, brought forth by by the imagination of these <laughs> these really smart developers that have come up with this technology. And so the SEC in the past. Um, and it's definitely gotten worse in the past years, but most recently in the last three months, the SEC has sued many, many projects and labeled them as securities. The exchanges got scared and delisted them and uh, the value and the trust in these projects has decreased and it's caused a lot of problems. Well, the SEC um, about three years ago sued Ripple and the coin is XRP. And um, most of the other crypto projects are just small little little shops. It's just a couple of founders that that came up with an idea and tried to market it and make it into a thing. Well, most of those caved and they're like, okay, whatever you want, just don't don't sue me and, and wreck my life. I you know we'll we'll cave to anything you want. But really, um, it didn't help. That didn't really help anybody. When the the SEC came along and sued Ripple. Ripple is a very, very uh, successful project with deep pockets. <laughs> They've got a lot of money at their disposal. And Ripple could see what was happening, how all these little guys were being squashed and the, the, the direction of regulation was going the wrong way. Um, they said, 
okay, you want to do this? <laughs> Let's do this. And so they hired lawyers and, and they spent hundreds of millions of dollars over the last three years fighting and trying to give legitimacy and clarity because honestly, clarity was half the battle and, and it was not coming from any other source. So through this lawsuit, they were kind of determined to provide clarity and some sort of uh, direction that we could, you know, kind of go. And so far it's been a brick wall. Well, just yesterday, and, and I'm calling July 13th Crypto Independence Day <laughs> because what happened was the judge was given all the information and they had all requested a summary judgment. And so the, the judge was going to decide whether um, XRP was a security or whether it wasn't and just kind of give an opinion. Well, yesterday they gave an opinion and they said, that XRP is not a security. And in fact, buying and selling it on these exchanges does not represent uh, transactions of a security, which essentially legalizes every um, crypto exchange out there that they're all operating the way they should because they're not transacting um, a whole bunch of unregistered, unlicensed security projects because <laughs> uh, then they'd really have the bullseye on them. So that was monumental. And then uh, using these coins for transactions, for purchases, for incentives, for bounties, all of that was not considered uh, security. And so if what they essentially did is they just took all the teeth out of the mouth of the SEC. The implications are that now all these 60 or 100 different projects that the SEC has sued saying you are an unli unlicensed, unregistered security, um, we now have legal precedent that anything that walks like if, like XRP and talks like XRP and was originated and started like XRP, um, they're all essentially whitewashed. And uh, cryptocurrency is pr practically proclaimed legal in the United States with way more information than we've ever had before. <laughs> so you know, I've been I, ecstatic. If I might, I, I tried to break this down into people know stocks is a security uh, that's created. Right. Uh, and the Securities and Exchange Commission regulates securities and they were trying to regulate crypto, but the court order came out and said no. Ultimately, after three years of arguments uh, presented in evidence, the decision said uh, by the judge, the court ordered that no, cryptocurrencies are not a security. And so you, the S Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, do not have regulatory authority over crypto. And so there was a celebration that we are free of the binds and ties uh, of the big bad government agency trying to tell us what to do and how to do it because the court said, it's out of your purview. You, you no longer have uh, the authority. So that said, what are the implications? And, and first of all, let's say, what was the impact, I'm curious, on the price of cryptocurrencies, maybe either uh, on Bitcoin or Ethereum or whatever else, other measurement you might want to say? What impact did this hearing yeah. have on that? XRP is a coin. It is traded. And um, I was looking at the price yesterday. And at one point during the day, it had opened at like 47 cents. Um, it had reached at least 100% gain within the day. Yeah. Uh, it's currently, let's see, what are we at now? Uh, 93 cents and it opened at 47. So it had a pretty massive movement upwards, nearly 100% gain in the, in the day. We've pulled back a little bit, but, but we're at 72 cents. So that the, the market has been pretty, pretty happy <laughs> with that. So a lot of that enthusiasm is really translating into um, pretty nice looking charts. So I think there's going to be probably some upside over the next few months. Um, and the impact is, is going to be felt forever. I mean, this is, this is a legal precedent that won't go away. Peering into the future to the extent that you can, how you see this yeah. having an impact. Well, so the, the problem is, is that because the SEC was being such a, a bully, um, for the past probably 
five years or more, um, the U.S. has been cut out of um, all kinds of projects. So I, I've, I've had a lot of interesting coins that have come around that I was interested in investing in. And I'll go to the website and try to learn more or try to find a place to, to start to buy some of these and whatever. And there will be a, a block on the website. We can see that you're, you're from an IP of, from the United States. Uh, you're not allowed to participate in what we're doing. And the world was moving on. The, Merval, the world, um, they, have, they have created regulations and they, the rest of the world is allowing um, this technology and the development uh, to thrive. And everyone in the United States has been just left out. And it's been very frustrating. And in fact, some, some states won't allow you to buy and, buy and sell because the states are, are backwards. And uh, a lot of this is because the federal government had not given any clear direction. And in fact, worse than clear direction, um, the unknown. Because even if even if the news is bad news, at least you know where to where you're where you stand and what to do and how to navigate that. Um, and so, not knowing is is almost worse than bad news. Because <laughs> at least when you have an idea, you can you can move forward. Well, uh, we just had the best outcome possible. Not only was the outcome favorable to. Uh, you know, to put us in line with the rest of the world to be able to develop this technology, it gave us um, clear, clear guidance. Like now we know that a, a cryptocurrency that set up the way Ripple did theirs is legal. And now people with ideas and people with, with money and ideas can finally uh, come out of the shadows and have the gumption to start projects. Like we might start seeing new technologies and new things advancing from this point forward because uh, people are not afraid to try new things. Man, I can't even tell you what a dark cloud that it's just hovered over the uh, crypto industry for years. And suddenly, you know, I mean, it's just amazing. It's like, it's a new day. It's, it's interesting to hear this. Not every cryptocurrency has a limited supply. Okay. Uh, there are plenty that um, have left it open-ended. Like Dogecoin is an example where I think there's a there's a five percent um, money supply increase for forever, <laughs> and uh, Ethereum actually is not capped. Uh, it it will continue to inflate. The what they've done though that's interesting is that they've added a burn mechanism where part of the fees of transacting goes to um, destroying coins. And now it's deflationary because the burn ended up being higher than the issuance. So um, each currency has their own little nuances, and uh, they also have their own, you know, cost of doing business. You know, how much does it cost to transact? And some are some are lower than others. But really, it is a good question: um, which coins have staying power? Uh, popularity is a major question. Um, and the other thing is network 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 effect. Um, which which of these coins are are just prevalent, um, almost universal, and how many have built in use cases and needs within their um, economy? So Bitcoin is the safest because of the network effect. It's also the most secure. Um, there's nobody's gonna get in and mess with anything in Bitcoin. It it's so big. And it's so expensive to mine that it is, it's, it's definitely the safest of all the coins. So if you're looking for something that'll last a long time and not, not have any issues, there's, that's that one. Ethereum has created use cases um, that every other coin just would love to match because not only were they, they have a first mover advantage and they've built all these use cases, so that makes them extremely valuable and they have a lot of staying power. So between those two, those are probably the blue chips. Everything else is um, probably more speculative, and there are smaller, you know, groups and different different um, projects have their own little communities, and um, it just depends on who's popular and who's not, and and who's solving something and who isn't, and a lot of these coins will come and go. So you really need to be careful buying anything that isn't the the couple of major coins that are out there. 
And that was going to be my next question. Can we lose money? We can lose money in a stock. Uh, of course, it can go up and down, but a stock can go bankrupt and then you've lost everything. Is there a corresponding risk to crypto coins? Yeah, um, most of these coins, well, I mean, it's, it's debatable. Um, many of these coins will never disappear. Even if nobody's interested and they, they stop using them and everything else, the the blockchain is is a, a kind of an eternal thing <laughs> as long as as long as ethereum exists every one of these little tiny meme coins will exist because they're built on ethereum um anything that's got its own chain those could eventually just disappear people will stop mining them and they'll just go away but um yeah the majority of these they'll have their day in the sun they'll go they'll get hyped up really good they'll go way high then they'll drop back down and then they might have another hype cycle or two. And then um, people are always looking for the next shiny toy. So uh, you can absolutely lose your money. A lot of these coins, they'll come out. And five years from the, the date they were released, they lost 99% of their value. <laughs> um, I'm a trader. So I keep, uh, I trade about 100 coins at a time. But it's always a, a short-term situation. I'm, I don't usually hold a coin more than you know six months to a year. Um, and then I'm always reevaluating is, is there enough volume on this coin still? Is there enough interest in, that there's, that people are still moving this coin and the price around? And so I'm always kind of reevaluating as I go. Should we worry about big government embracing cryptocurrencies as a means of controlling the populace and, and that we would lose our, our freedoms? Yeah, we should be worried about that. Uh, in fact, governments would rather not have cash. They would rather have a digital currency because um, they can track it, they can turn it off, they can they can shut you down. Um, cash societies, um, you know, there's there's always counterfeiting. There's there's transactions that that might not be legal or something according to the government. Um, and 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 you know, you can't get me started because I, I think a lot of a lot of illegal things have the blessing of those in power, um, and so it's it's there's a lot of hi hypocrisy there. But um, a, a central bank digital currency, you know, every currency, just like I mentioned earlier, Bitcoin is limited to 21 million, but Ethereum's not, and uh, whoever develops or produces the cryptocurrency can set the parameters. There are a lot of coins, um, like stable coins, that their their money supply goes up and down uh, debate, based on demand, and they they keep the value pegged to one dollar. Well, if a central bank decides that they're going to produce a currency, they have complete control. They will develop it in such a way that they can turn off anybody's account at any time. They can inflate the money supply exactly the way they inflate fiat and they just they pull all the strings so um and then not only that but they also have um they would be able to, to surveil everything you did because if if calvin has to register my my wallet with this um you know to, to transact and use this economy they're going to have a registry of every single person and, and know exactly who's buying and selling what. And so in our prior interview, you were, you were talking, talking about, you know, yeah, we, in, on Bitcoin, you can see money move, but you don't know if you're buying shoes or not. Well, if, if the government knows everybody's wallet, they're going to know which wallet belongs to the shoe store and which, which store, you know, this and that. So they will get very granular into all of our business and know exactly what we're doing. Thankfully, um, there's, an, there's an alternative. And the original um, ethos of, of crypto is, is that privacy and security. And so Bitcoin and these others are a great alternative. So if we're kind of forced to transact in a CBDC world, um, this central bank digital currency world, um, we just need to recognize that, yeah, we can keep a certain amount in, in those currencies out of necessity or whatever, but the majority of, of our value should be stored in a currency that will actually, that we maintain control of. 
But yeah, I can see a lot of, of dangers and problems with privacy happening uh, if they enroll roll that out. Um, there are developments in, in the works, though, that there are even Ethereum uh, in their um, timeline of things that they're developing. They're going to be interested in installing um, privacy features. So even some of these old open blockchains that are pseudo anonymous, um, they're, they're going to be completely anonymous eventually. So those developments are coming. That's the interesting thing about this money as a technology because it can evolve. I mean, there's all kinds of transactions we do uh, in the world that are um, kind of off the books, you might say. I mean, you, you, you pay your babysitter, you pay a kid to cut the grass. Uh, the babies, you're not paying social security tax on the babysitting money you're giving. I mean, it's just, these are kind of understood that these are by the general public. Although under the law, technically, you're probably supposed to be able to be withholding social security taxes for the babysitter. So this is where <laughs> some of the things that we don't even think about which are friction-free transactions that we do now, or you go to a garage sale and buy a sweater. Uh, all mm -hmm. of a sudden, if it's a crypto world that uh, we have to use the federal government's crypto coin, then all of a sudden, all of these transactions that we were making friction-free come with uh, a lot more friction. Yeah. And in fact, they can program anything they want. So they they can program sales tax. They could program in a percentage of everything that you send. A portion of that goes back to the originating wallet. So they can, you know, and they can change those parameters. So it's it's sort of up to the imagination of the issuer. <clears throat> so uh, there, there's a lot of things. There are a lot of reasons to be nervous if if uh, governments become the uh, developer of a cryptocurrency, um, but uh, that that's also unde undeveloped. Like that's that's new territory as well. And if I kind of feel like in a in a world where people are all transacting in cryptocurrencies, that it'll probably be a gateway to the safer currencies. <laughs> I actually think it'll probably be a boost to the 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 coins, you know, because pu public information is public. Well, and, let me, and let me, public opinion helps. Two questions. Uh, to your knowledge, are any of the central banks, uh, and for those who don't know, I mean, the Federal Reserve would be a, a, an example of that. Are any of the central banks around the world now looking, are they going to be creating their own, own coin? Uh, so that, yeah. let's, let's start with that question. Yeah, there are, there are lots. And I don't have a list, but I know that China is working on one, or if they're, I think they're probably the closest. Um, Europe is trying to do a digital euro, and um, lots of major major companies or countries are are trying to do one or develop one. And there's a lot of speculation that the federal government's new FedNow program is a digital currency. So and, and, when and then those things are released, do, we'll find out. What would that do if I held Ethereum or, you know, XRP or Dogecoin, any of these coins, if I, if I had those as, you know, part in my investment portfolio, would a Federal Reserve digital coin wipe out the value of these other currencies to where the government would say those no longer apply? No, because it's a separate system. Every, every coin is its own software, right? So if the central bank digital currency comes out with their software and their wallet has it's running on its own chain or its own software, or even if they built it on Ethereum, um, it, it can be managed on Ethereum or other things, but that doesn't mean that um, you know Bitcoin is untouched because it's its own software. And Ethereum, the underlying layer one, it's its own software as well. So uh, just by them inventing a new coin does not take away from any of the existing coins. There are so many different aspects to the story that, uh, again, when we can't, even when we do a half an hour, which we've just done here already, this, this time goes by so fast. Uh, 
it, it's hard to cover all the issues and all the questions. I mean, we could do eight hours on, on the various issues here. But uh, I've already kept you longer than I should. For those who want to get a hold of you again how or, and follow some of your uh, information sharing that you do, how can they how can they learn more from you? Yeah, you can find me pretty easily on Twitter. And I'm, I always have my DMs open just because I'm smart enough to not give people money over DM and stuff like that. So Calvin Wait on, on Twitter. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Um, my home base that I do all my, my trading and my, my videos and things is on cryptoinfluencers.com. So that's a, that's a pretty good resource. There's also a chat there so you can ask me questions and we can talk about issues or coins or even problems with investing. Um, I'm obviously not a, a, a accredited, you know, financial advisor or, an, or, or a broker of any kind, but um, I know how the world, I know how the world of investing works and I've done it successfully. So if you're in a tight spot or if you want an opinion, I'm happy to give you one. <clears throat> well, and we should say just in closing, it's like everything. There's good things and bad things. Um, you know, people get killed in cars. And on the other hand, we all enjoy driving and being able to go places, uh, drive across the country. So it, while mm -hmm. we look at this world of cryptocurrencies, they're going to be bringing advantages, but they also will have some disadvantages that have to be discussed. And that's part of what we want to talk about. It's not like we're just here waving the uh, flag and just saying, yay, yay, go team. There are going to be concerns we have to have as we move into this new world of digital currencies. And so that's part of what we also want to talk about. Is there anything else you okay, want to add yeah. before we close? No, I just, I just want to encourage you guys to give it a shot. You know, the best way to learn it is to do it. And I, and as I, my advice with trading is I always tell people to trade small. Don't put a lot of money into something that you're unfamiliar with. Right. You need to, you, you start small, you, you feel it out, you get the parameters. Uh, you really don't understand it till you get burned once. So you might as well get burned with a hundred bucks rather than 20,000 or something. I would echo that advice. I tell people that 90% <laughs> of learning in life is emotional learning. Uh, and most of investing isn't that hard to understand. The hard part is mastering your emotions when the markets yeah. are going down or not to be too giddy when they're going up. But uh <laughs> Maybe again, maybe next time we can talk about and you can give us some advice on trading cryptocurrencies for those who want to hear about it. But uh, in the meantime, we'll let you go. Thanks as always. And again, the people can follow up with you online to uh, follow you both on Twitter and on the website and learn more. But Calvin, wait, we appreciate your time. Thank you.